attention to him. Sorry, Mr. Thomas. It's okay, Coach Morgan, you're still the greatest. All right, you guys should be able to see that now. Uh, anywho, what, what, what I'm trying to get at is that although with examples like four and five here, although they're already factored at the beginning, okay, that's a temptation. That's sort of, I hate to call it a trick question, but that's a, that's a spot where a lot of students will get themselves in trouble by saying, oh, yeah, I remember what Coach Morgan said. He said, take each individual, individual factor and set it equal to either zero, or sometimes I'll see them, they'll set it equal to 3x since it's, well, this ain't the 3x product property. OK, it's a zero product property. I can't go ahead and, and skip that first step. What I need to do is I need to set it equal to zero, which would mean doing what to both sides of growth? Good, we're going to subtract 3x. So I got 3x minus 8 times x minus 1. All of that, that left hand side originally, minus 3x equals zero. Now here's where a little intuition kicks in. OK, we're going to see if Drew's got some intuition. Drew, what do you think I could do to that left side to maybe simplify, combine some like terms? Yes, sir, that a boy. We're going to foil out that left hand side, those two binomials at least, right? And get some like terms. Can you help me do that foil? F O I L, right? Can you guys help me? What, um, Nate, what are the, what's the first term of that foil going to yield? 3x squared, okay. And Will Edwards, what's the, I'm going to ask you to do the, the outer and the inner together in your head and tell me what the result would be. Minus 3x minus 8x. Can you put that together? Try again. So negative three and negative eight. Negative eleven x. Good. Negative eleven x. And then Alex, last. Did you get a haircut? No. Maybe it said jacket. I haven't seen you wear it in a while. Uh, negative eight, negative one. What do we get? Try again. We're multiplying. Try one more time. Positive eight. That a boy. Okay. So positive eight minus three x. Quentin, which uh, which two terms are going to go together? Good. And so that's going to give me negative 14x, right? Negative 14x plus 8 equals 0. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to scoot this second example down. But can you guys see what we've just done there? We, we took a problem that was already factored, but there was some other stuff on the other side. We brought the stuff over to the other side. We foiled it out. We combined, and now we've got zero on one side and we're set ready to factor and use the ZPP. OK, all right. So Reed's going to tell us what factoring technique we should use on 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Is there a GCF? I'll walk you through the process. Is there a GCF? No. Is it the difference of two squares? No, of course not. It's trinomial. Is it a perfect square trinomial? No, because 3x squared and 8, neither of those are perfect squares. Is it a regular trinomial where I would look at the 8 and see what two factors add up to 14? Jack's over there whispering. The, the hand sanitizer kingpin thief is, is whispering magic. Magic, magic, magic method. It's magic method. The reason it's not a regular trinomial is because I can't look at 8 and say, oh, yes, two factors of eight. Number one, there aren't two factors of eight that add up to negative 14. But number two, there's that three that we have to contend with also. So this is a case for magic method. You guys, I, I like changing color. You guys will remember the three disappears, right? Three times eight is 24. That looks like 12 and two. Three comes back. If there's any commonality, we kill that off. And so we have a nice x minus 4, 3x minus 2 equals 0. Mossy, can you uh, can you tell us what we need to do to double check to make sure I didn't mess that up? Can't see Mossy. I might be able to hear you. I see you unmuted yourself. I, I still couldn't hear you. Lewis, can you speak up and try and say something at home? I don't know if I got my speakers turned on. Hello? Say something, Lewis. Hello? Rats. It ain't working. All right, hold on, boys. I hate when this happens. All right, let's see. Quick, somebody tell me something interesting while I'm 
fiddling with this setting. Anybody know anything good? Urban Myers got hired as the uh, got hired as the uh, head coach of Jacksonville Jaguars. Y'all know that. Philadelphia Phillies let their Phillies Philadelphia Eagles let their head coach go. Y'all know that. James Harden got traded to the Nets. Y'all know that. Okay, there's three sports facts for you. Uh, Lewis, try to say something else. Hello. Aha! I can hear you now. Hello, indeed. Okay, so uh, why don't we do this just as a class? What, what do I do, class, to check to make sure I haven't messed this up? Pull it out, multiply back out, and it checks. So, so here's where I'm going to push you guys a little bit. Okay, Paul will push you. Yeah. Uh, can you we skip this intermediate step and go right from instead of saying, oh yeah, x minus four equals zero, uh, add four, add four, x equals four. Can we skip right down and say, ah, x equals four, or and then what's this other one going to be, Paul? Yes, sir. That a boy. That's the goal. We want to be able to take it from a linear factor down to an answer in our heads quickly and accurately. Okay. Uh, by the way, there's two answers for this equation because it was originally a quadratic equation for the fundamental theorem of algebra that makes sense. Two answers. Okay. So there we go. Now, not to um, not to get too fancy here, but do you guys remember graphing lines? Uh, and maybe even a little bit of some parabolas back in the first semester. Do you remember how we talked about graphing uh, lines? Uh, a line has a, a what? A slope, right? You guys talked about that in your middle school class, right? Okay, a line has a slope. Um, if we wanted to put it in y-intercept form or slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, which one of those is the slope? Yeah. M, right? Okay, sweet. So, so like, here's here's the rundown. Um, if if we were going to look at this left hand side as a parabola. And we we're going to look at this right hand side. As a line. What do you think we're doing when we solve the equation where that function on the left is supposed to equal that function on the right? What are we finding in other words? Yeah, we're finding, hey, and I'm just through the parabola down there. It's not actually what the parabola looks like. But what we're doing is we're finding the points of intersection. Whoops. Where the line, OK, uh, and and the parabola. Cross. I'm just again spitballing here, but but where do you think they crossed? They crossed at two thirds. And where? And four. That's visually what you guys are doing. You're solving a system uh, where the left hand side is one function and the right hand side is another function. You're just trying to find where do those two intersect. All right. And so there's a lot of different ways for you to consider equations that you're solving. OK, uh, in blue, we worked it out algebraically. Uh, sometimes it's easier to solve a system graphically. So when you guys get a little bit older and you start learning your chops on, on graphing functions, Sometimes that's quicker, especially if you're using a computer or a graphing calculator. OK, so I, I want you to understand what it means to solve an equation is you're finding any and all of the values for X in this case that plug in and make a true statement on both uh, curves, right? In other words, I plug in X on the left, I plug in X on the right, and everything's hunky dory. Um, when you look at this equivalent equation, I'll box this one here in blue. What you've done is you have have shifted gears. You've combined as, as I forget who was helping me do it, but you've combined the left side and the right side to one function, a new function. And, and now that new function. Is going to look like this and guess what those two zeros are. Those two zeros that you just found again are two thirds. And four. OK. Where does this curve equal zero? Zero is the horizontal line that's the x-axis. Lewis, go ahead with your question, buddy. Isn't it negative two-thirds? Or is it not? No, sir, it's positive two-thirds. Um, so, so like down here where we got our parentheses, I'll write it up in green here. If I had 3x minus 2 equals zero, I would add 2 to both sides to get 3x by itself. Oh, okay. And then divide by 3. Good question. Divide by three. And I like to tell my students, I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet or not, 
but I like to say it's kind of bass backwards. It's, it's the opposite of what you see. Uh, so, like, if I see a minus four, have you noticed that it's always plus? It's always positive. And if the other factor has a, has a positive, then that answer is going to be negative. That, that's how it works out. Okay. Now, you've got one to do on your own. Oh, give this one a try. It will work very, very similarly to the last one. Man, we got a varsity basketball game tonight at 7:30. I got to announce for. Um, I'm going to be hoarse when I wake up tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. No, I like fractions. I can't read that. Wow, well, yeah, bro, that's fine. I actually prefer improper fractions. I will be hoarse tomorrow, but I will be happy tomorrow because we're going camping. We're going to get up and load up the old wagon and hit the road. Do y'all do winter camping in your families, anybody? More scouts. Did you go to uh, Kayakima this winter? Nice. I had a couple of my high school kids that went there. Y'all are? Are you going to Hardy, Arkansas tomorrow or just? Oh, bro, that is awesome. Dude, Cumberland Cabins. We were, before the pandemic, we were planning Teddy's Cub Scout Pack. Uh, was going to do a spend the night adventure in, in the caverns. Uh, Dude, lucky you, man. That's awesome. I hope you all have a fun trip. It's going to be cold, but uh, should be the weather should be nice. Sea base, you said? Nice. Yeah, I, I like winter camping. You're not, you're not sweating your, your tail off and you're, uh, it's cold, but if you're out walking around hiking and biking and enjoying the great outdoors, you're warm anyway. It's laying up in that tent that makes you cold. And if you got a good sleeping bag, then you won't be, you won't be shivering. Theo, I've got you set up right here, buddy. I do not uh, think it should take you super long time, so just do your best. Right. You got your yourself calculated? Yes, sir. Is my mic All right, that boy. What about a pencil? You got a pencil? Yes, sir. Nice. All right, give you guys about another minute to chew on this one, and then we'll go. We'll go over. We'll discuss. What did they serve for lunch up here yesterday? Uh, chicken piccata. Ah, man, I missed a good one. I like chicken piccata. I've never had chicken piccata. It's, it's pretty good. Sometimes they dry it out, but most of the time it's pretty moist and delicious. I'm not a big fan of capers, though, so I don't ever eat those little capers. Capers are kind of, yeah. Lewis, do you still have a question? Or is your digital hand just raised on the last one? Sorry, forgot about that. Oh, no worries, no worries. Just double checking. All right, fellas. Um, let's see how you've done. If you're still working, that's great. No problem. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and foil and subtract eight. Kill two birds with one stone here. I got k squared minus one, and then that minus eight gives me zero over on the right hand side. So the k squared minus one comes from foil, right? Uh, Alex, why in the world did I get two terms instead of three? Usually when I foil, I got three terms. What happened on that foil? Yeah, why did we leave out the oi? What happens when we multiply a binomial? Oh, do y'all remember that C word? Conjugate K plus one and K minus one. The oi does what, guys? Cancels out, right? Because if you have if you have that outer as negative one K and that inner as positive one K, those will cancel out. And that's always gonna happen. Whenever you multiply a binomial times its conjugate, you can take that to the bank, okay? It will cancel out. Uh, so we got k squared minus 9 equals 0 now. k squared minus 9 equals 0. Uh, I think I had read factoring the last time. Luke, I'll throw it to you this time. Can you factor that left-hand side out for us, please? What did you say now? First of all, is there a GCF? 
No, between K squared and nine, no common factors, right? Second thing I do is I notice it is a binomial, okay? What is our only factoring technique thus far for a binomial class? The difference of two squares. So Luke, K squared is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square, we're subtracting. So the result is gonna be a binomial times its conjugate, okay? We'll fill in those two binomials. You told me K goes up front. What's gonna go at the back? Three, and how about signage? I, I can't hear. Yes, sir, that'll boy. Minus three and plus three. Excellent. And again, well, I asked this question a million times. You guys are probably sick of hearing it. How do I check Luke to make sure he did it right? Yeah, we can do it mentally, foil it out. And, and it's very similar to the very first foil that we did in this problem, whereby we just say, oh, first times first is K. Last times last is negative nine. The OI cancels out because they're conjugates. And that's great, okay? So what are my two answers? Uh, Joe Edwards, what are my two answers going to be? Mm -hmm. And I like to write a little plus or minus in front, and that's just a, an efficient way. That is an efficient way of writing two answers in, in one spot. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to write k equals three or k equals negative three. You just say k equals plus or minus three. Are you, are you guys familiar with the plus or minus sign? You guys see that in y'all's classes at all ever? Towards the end of the year, we'll learn what's called the quadratic formula. It has a plus or minus in it. Uh, and again, plus or minus is just a way of writing two things uh, at the same time um, and save a little space. OK, now we want to talk about a concept. I, I taught this to my ninth graders the other day uh, and they did a great job with it. It's a concept called multiplicity. All right. So when we're solving equations, all right, Drew, when we're solving equations, sometimes, you know, we get multiple answers. Like we've seen in the last example, x equals three, x equals negative three. That's quadratic equation, two answers. Um, like this example we're about to look at, it's a degree three, so there's gonna be three answers. You will hear me this year use some, some different words interchangeably as it pertains to the quote answers of an equation, all right? When we're finding the answer to an equation, the solution to an equation, when we're finding the roots of an equation, when we're finding the zeros of an equation, those words are all interchangeable in this context. If you're solving an equation, you're finding the solutions, the roots, the zeros, what have you. Those, those names are going to be used interchangeably, so familiarize yourself with them, okay? And multiplicity refers to when one or more of the roots of an equation is repeated. In other words, I might solve an equation, I might get x equals five, or x equals five, or x equals three, or x equals two. All right, there were four solutions to that little hypothetical scenario, right? Two of them were identical, and that's okay. Sometimes you get a repeated root. It has, therefore, what is called multiplicity. Multiplicity was a movie back in the 80s uh, starring a guy named Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton played Batman in the 80s, the first couple of Batman movies uh, when I was a child. And um, y'all probably have seen him more recently in a Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. Do you remember the Vulture character? You guys know him? That's, that, his name is Michael Keaton. He's an actor. Been in a bunch of stuff. And uh, anyway, he started this little romantic comedy back in the 80s or 90s called Multiplicity, whereby he... He wanted to enjoy his life, and he was tired of going to work, tired of dealing with like stuff around the house. So he he learned to clone himself. So he cloned himself, and he would send his clone off to work. He cloned himself, and he'd send his clone to the house or to the grocery store or whatever. Uh, but the the funny part of it was that each time he cloned himself, the clone got dumber and dumber. Okay, and so it was like I said, romantic comedy, uh, and you know his love interest was played by a lady named Andy McDowell, who was the uh, love interest in the movie Groundhog Day, too. I don't know if y'all have seen Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. One of my favorite comedies of all time. Probably my fourth favorite movie of all time. Uh, but anywho, I digress. Uh, the, the notion of multiplicity here is, is kind of like that, right? It's like if you were to say, oh, my answer is cloned. I had a couple, two, three of the same kind of answer. It has multiplicity. Now, multiplicity affects other things like the graph of, of your function as well. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. I want to show you how this example would work. Joey, my first step should be what whenever I'm dealing with an equation like this? 
before I start factoring, I need to consider this is called the ZPP, the zero product property. So before you factor, do what? That I boy. We want to, we want to set it up so that it's equal to zero. So we're going to do just like what Joey said. Uh, we're going to subtract 60 M squared. And George, do you notice where I put it? Why did I do that? Very good. It needs to be a, a just second second nature at this point, okay? That you guys put terms in what I like to call decreasing exponential order. You know what I mean? Where the exponents count down. Now, uh, we're going to go to what Joey said, which was, I think Joey said uh, common factor, right? Can you, uh, let's see here, uh, Ben, can you tell me what's in common between those three terms? I, I might not have heard you. Very good. M is in common. And when I take out an M, I'm going to be left with 9M squared, excuse me, 9M cubed. No, 9M squared. Duh. Uh, minus 60M plus 100 equals zero. Okay. Okay. Now, Nate, help me factor it a little further, please. Because I took the M out. Now I got to deal with this trinomial. Once you think about our factoring list technique, technique list, uh, we did GCF. It's obviously not different to two squares. Now it's a trinomial. So what should I check for? What's the easiest type of trinomial I should check for? Psst. Aha, that boy. Perfect square. PST, perfect square trinomial. And in class, is this a PST? Yeah, it certainly is. I can check that real quick by saying, oh, the first term, is it a perfect square? Yes. The last term, is it a perfect square? Yes. And then do y'all remember that, that final check that we run? That's so important. James? Um, and if that is the middle term, and we are good to go. So 3m times 10 is 30m. Double that, you got 60m. We're good to go. So we'll say 3m minus 10. How do I normally write my answer up when I'm factoring a PST? Quantity squared. I normally will put quantity squared. However, I'm going to break from tradition, break from convention here for illustrative purposes. So that you guys can see, OK? Like, like there's nothing mathematically wrong about what I've written up there. It boils out, distribute the M, and you got what you're supposed to get, OK? But what I wanted to do here is illustrate the fact that, hey, look, if, if I use my ZPP, my first answer gets set equal to 0, M equals 0. That's one root. My second answer, get, or my second factor gets set equal to 0. That's another root. And then my third answer, my third factor, get set equal to zero, and that's going to provide me with my third root. Now, I normally wouldn't write out this long, drawn-out step, but uh, you guys can, from these last two, you can tell they're identical. What's the solution there going to be? Just call it out. Yeah, 10 thirds. Nick asked a question a minute ago uh, up here, one of my, my freshmen, about improper fractions. What do you guys think? Are improper fractions okay? You daggum right they are. Now look. We've got three answers. One, two, three. So so my fundamental theorem of algebra still holds. It was a cubic equation, and guess what? We have three answers. It's just that one of those answers, one of those roots, is repeated. It is this ten thirds is called a double root here in this context. A root that is repeated has what's that M word? Has multiplicity okay and where earlier today we talked about how you could look at the solutions of an equation graphically speaking as the x-intercepts right as the zeros here's what this and again you don't have to know how to do this i promise uh, just yet but look here's what this curve is doing it's a degree three function this guy right here 9m cubed minus 60m squared plus 100m is a degree three function. So it's it's not a, a field goal, it's not a parabola. Field goal is good, or swole patrol. We talked about that, right? But it's doing what I like to call the disco. It's doing the disco. It's pointing down into the left, 
Up and to the right. Y'all looked at me like, please don't ever do that again, Coach Morgan. <laughs> well, tough toenails. I will do it again. Um, but here's here's the idea. That's one root right there of zero. And here's another root of what? Ten thirds. Okay. And the reason that this graph looks the way that it does, instead of the curve kind of <clears throat> coming through the x-axis and then <clears throat> coming back up through there and having three distinct x-intercepts or roots or solutions, right? Why, why didn't my curve hit the x-axis in three distinct places? It was because of multiplicity. When you have a multiplicity, when you have a root that is repeated, what it does is it makes your curve act a little bit different. Uh, this you'll learn this. I'm teaching you algebra two right now. Uh, but you'll learn this is called a little touch and go. It's where the curve is tangent to the x-axis. It doesn't pass through it. It just comes up, gives it a little, gives it a little kiss, and then keeps on going back up. All right. When that happens, that's the telltale sign of multiplicity. Okay. When you guys get in algebra two, you'll have seen that already, and you'll be ahead of no pun intended, ahead of the curve here uh, with your classmates. But any, any questions on example six on how we found our three answers? Um, and, and why why the, there's multiplicity there? Nothing. If I were going to write my answers up in a solution set, I would not write them twice. I would just write them write ten thirds just once. Jack. Mm -mm. You could have done magic method there. And it would have taken a while. And that's why we want. If you didn't hear Jack's question, he said. Was was PSP the only way of factoring that? And I said, no, we could have used magic method. Heck, you could have used British method or guess and check method, right? But the idea is that, hey, what's up, man? You okay? Can I help you? I'm asking, do you need something? Are you okay? Or are you just checking out what's going down? One oh three, I bet, or maybe one oh nine. That's OK, but I'm, I'm just trying to help you find where you want to be. You doing uh, Smash Bros? It's down the hall. <laughs> We've been having this week a Super Smash Brothers tournament before school where each advisory um, sends a captain and then they compete uh, against each other. And uh, today's the championship. And so I'm super stoked. My uh, my house, the, the freshmen have won. Uh, all the way to the championship for my house. So uh, Flavian's got some some representatives. It's Luke. Luke Hecht is going. Supposedly he's good at Smash Bros. I don't know. I can't make heads or tails of that game. I can believe that. Do y'all do y'all play Super Smash Bros.? He says he's good at that game. A couple of you guys do? Yeah, he does say he's good at that game. Uh, dude, I'm I'm so bad at that game it ain't even funny. Okay. Teddy the nine year old can whoop me up one side down the other. Uh, but you know that's that's whatever. Neither here nor there. Uh, Jack, to your to your point, man. Yeah, you could you could factor that trinomial differently. But I think prioritizing your your techniques. Start with GCF, and if it's a trinomial after that, look for PST because that's the easiest way to go. Magic method uh, could be used here, but it would take uh, it would take a little bit longer. All right. We don't have time to start this next example, so we'll start this one on Tuesday. Notice I said Tuesday. Why is that? No school on Monday. All right, so you guys have a blessed weekend. Live Jesus in our hearts. And I will see you all next week. Thanks again.